South Yorkshire, back in the motherland, for me anyway, not for John. You might have told by his accent, he's from an odd place. Some, <laughs> somewhere down south. We're uh, doing something that I've been excited to do since I started doing this Hughes Railway Explorers, and it's carrying on some of the story of the Woodhead Railway, the UK's first electrified main line. Today we're out walking from Deep Car, we're going up as far as Penniston. So we're just doing that section today, filming it over the course of a, a couple of videos because there's quite a lot to see, quite a lot I want to show you. What have we done with the weather today? Yeah, we've brought the bad weather with us. It's, uh, we, we've been keeping an eye on the forecast like, shall we, shan't we? And the weather, it, it was horrific, so we said, right, we'll keep an eye on it. It got better, and it got worse, then it got better. <laughs> And then it stayed. And then it's horrific. But never mind, we won't let that spoil. Has anyone ever thought that I let the weather put me off some of the horrific conditions I've been out in over the years? But anyway, we're staying at Deep Cart, so I'll see you back down at the start. In case you don't know, the Woodhead Line was one of the main railway lines between the cities of Sheffield and Manchester. It was closed, some would say quite short-sightedly, in the early 1980s. Now it is still technically an active railway line between Sheffield Victoria and Deepcar, so we're starting our explore in the, uh, in the village of Deepcar today, which is the start of the disused section. Now here, if I just show you, we've got the former Deepcar Railway station buildings, private residence now. Um, you can't really get close to it, but look at that beautiful building. If you remember, clean the lens. Um, if you remember, we was at Outer Bridge not too long ago, um, a couple of months ago this summer. That's not that far away. That's the next hop down the line from here. There's a bridge in front. Um, so let me just explain a bit what's going on at Deep Car. So this line still got the tracks down, still technically in use, uh, but I don't think there's any trains um, regularly scheduled on it now towards Stocksbridge Steelworks, which is in that direction. Now our Woodhead line that we're going to be picking up, the disused line, leaves somewhere over there, leaves this, I call it an active line for now because technically it still is, isn't it? Um, so we're going to go through this bridge underneath the railway and see if we can pick up the disused trap bed. It's just a bit dark, isn't it? In fact, I can't even see where we're walking here. All right, so yeah, this must be the woodhead uh, route, the woodhead line in front then, John. Is it? Just have a look at this, uh, this bridge before we get up on top of the trap bed. Same as we just walked through, isn't it? So there's the bridge, up onto the track bed we go. So straight away, we're seeing ballast. And it feels so fresh. We're just uh, heading back towards, um, towards Deep Car Station now, down here. Just to see if there's anything to spot down here. Already seeing fence posts, big line of fence posts there up to one side, scanning as we're walking along the old trap bed, just passing all these these posts look, and there's a uh, post there with quite a little, quite a lot of brackets left, left on there, obviously for cabling. Hey, literally minutes in for today's trip and we're coming across a big pile of sleepers. Every one of these posts here, look, has got these brackets on. There's another one. I hope it's not too dark. It's not the best conditions today. It's quite dark under these trees. And here is uh, a collection. Let's get these brambles untangled from me. Um, collection of rails here, look, just laid down by the side. They've been taken up. I'm just trying to see if there's a date on there. I can't get BR. 
1972. These rails were uh, made so recent. See, and this line closed in 81. I don't know when the rails on this little section here were, uh, were ripped up. But there they are. Anyway, I'll just make a note of this now. We've not crossed any fences. We've not even passed a sign, have we, John? Yeah, this no, nothing. We've just walked unimpeded down this, this pathway that you think was just a public footpath. And, and I'm not going to go too far because I, this is what I'd class as naughty. But look, the, uh, the active railway line is just here. Now, I know there's no trains. Um, I'm not, I mean, look how overgrown that is. I'm not, I'm not a fan of doing this. I'm just going to stick, just sticking the camera out of the bushes. There's the catch, catch points there, look. So we're on the junction. Now where the light, uh, land se uh, line separated, there's deep uh, deep car station where we've just uh, parked up, just only just there. So this is can't see any platforms from here. No yard lamp, but well, Sheffield's in that direction, and, and in that direction that line's curving round to Stocksbridge Steelworks, and then obviously we've just walked down this path here. Um, which is the Woodhead line, which is where we're headed today. Cheers to Melv Kirkham for letting me use this photograph of the junction where we've just been stood. It's taken in 1995, so it's been disused a while, but just look how much more open it is compared to that forest that we've just walked through. So going off into the centre, we can see the old Woodhead line towards Wortley. And just curving left from shot, we can see the Stocksbridge Steelworks line. But we can see that line of posts that we've been following all the way from where we joined the track bed. So I'm actually enjoying this first little bit. We've just been saying we're going to be walking on the trail, the Transpennine Trail, so it's well used. Um, so to find things like this, all the bits of track and the posts, um, things left along there. It's, I, I do prefer stuff like this that's not been cleaned up. And you know, this puddle, this is what we're up against today. Probably a good time to, to mention actually, John. Um, yeah. We just had a couple of days ago. We've had storm, storm Babette. Is that how you say it? Bab Babette. Babbitt, it's caused around my area, um, North Derbyshire, um, even around South Yorkshire, it's caused absolute devastation. Places I drive through every day um, are up to the top of their, their doors in flood water. And I can't begin to imagine what that must be like watching your, your home ruined like that. But I mean, just seeing on the news, it really brings it home. I mean, yeah. The, cat, the, the catcliffe from, from the viaduct where we were stood last year, it's just, it's harrowing. And places I've stood in the last few months, in Chesterfield, Hornsbridge, the Brampton branch down uh, up Chatsworth Road. So, um, yeah, if you are impacted, I um, just want to send my, uh, my sympathies out and hope you, uh, you uh, get back on your feet soon. Just fetched you just to the side. Of the, of the trap bed now just to show you these poles uh, these posts going all the way down these have lost their brackets but all the way as we've been walking along we've been seeing these all the way from the junction where we've just been stood where the railway lines are so all the way from the uh, the junction we have been walking down you can see it's quite a wide um plateau this look um quite a number of sidings wide looks like there was holding sidings here just after the junction yeah. We've got some kind of crossing uh, here. We've got, I don't know what this was, was it? I think it's just uh, a drainage cover, isn't it? At the side of the line, but it was the post that I saw that caught my eye. There's also, I don't know what that is, something concrete on its side. MP, MP mile post. Right. So where's the mile post around somewhere? I think these are gate posts, these aren't they? But it was these, look. Ah, look at these. That, that's I shouldn't quite trust in touching it. It's never going to be live after all this time, is it? But electric, electrical cables, it's pure steel, or is it just. I'm surprised we've not seen any of the, uh, the overhead, um, mm. overhead post, the catenary support structures. It's everything we've done on this line in the past 
that they've just been, when we did Mottram, I think we just became so desensitized to him. We're like, oh yeah, another one of them. But normally you see something like that. And that's, I think that's quite an, an interesting find post with the brackets on as well. I think I'll stop showing you these now. I think we've seen quite, quite enough of these, haven't we? Oh. Oh, and look at this. Brilliant. Old overhead post. Look at these. Look at this. Something up there, look. I don't know what that is. Can't get up there. Bit of a bit of a bit of a drop this retaining wall. But look at the recess that this is in. I don't know what it is, it's got a hole in this end, hasn't it? Like something threaded through it. Huge bolts, it's got some mechanisms attached to it. Maybe something to do with signalling or points perhaps, or who knows? Look at the Hello. ladder posts all the way, both sides. There's another, I can see the other, because it's, it's a oh. yeah, gantry at the other side as well. You're going to be sick of seeing these by the end of today, I'm sure. Right, we just climbed off that little bit of uh, trap bed we've been walking on. We're joining the, uh, the Trans Pennine Trail now, Warncliffe Woods, um, Soxbridge Bypass. Is it the 616? Remember, don't think this is the alignment of the place into the railway line because we've just deviated off. I think that goes just in there at a lower level to this. Um, and this road was built after the railway closed. Right, signs for Sheffield that way. Warncliffe Woods. We're going in this direction. A little bit of respite from the rain, John. I'm just trying to figure out where the alignment of the track bed is. See it, look, John, this is the, you can see the, the cutting down below here the Stocksbridge Bypass just behind us has obliterated this they've obviously built the bankings up so busy popular trail and it is um, a popular railway line this it's I would say I mean let's just talk a little about the wooded mm. line John first off I mean obviously so many layers of history you know that it's that it was built by that Manchester Ashford Aston the Line Sheffield Company, I can't remember the order of that. Then Manchester Sheffield Lincolnshire Railway, it was Great Central Railway. And then the bit that really seemed to take off um, this line as a well known line when it became the Woodhead Line, and that was yeah, yeah. it became the UK's first um, electrified main line. And I don't think we've made enough of that piece of history and we've covered parts of this line in the past we did at the other side we did godly junction we did mottram sidings dinting so we're familiar with this i've done it all the way back in sheffield sheffield victoria we've even seen some of this line over in barnsley john <laughs> yeah, that was funny. so we're not we're not a stranger um and we're going to be following this all the way eventually over to hadfield yeah, yeah, we're we're we? Do the connecting yeah we actually, uh, this was our plan for this year doing this and yeah, yeah. then I broke my leg, bugged myself up and here we are in the, the midst of winter about to take over and just getting away. I always seem to leave these remote desolate places to, to do in January. We've got the uh, luxury of having a mobile phone signal today so we can look things up, haven't we John? So we're coming into towards Wortley now, just left Stocksbridge Bypass behind us. Um, What's say the map's pulling up here, John? It's say uh, this sort of loading area and lots of cranes noted on the map. Right. And this is a map from around the turn of the uh, the 20th century, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, in here show you can see there's a a large flat area. So here we are, the next station on the line. Doesn't seem that much of a distance since we uh, left Deep Car, to be honest, but this is the next the next hop, if you were a passenger, this is uh, this is Wortley. Now, is this the platform edge, John? It is, isn't it, look? I don't know if it was a, a wall being created, but it is the actual original. Isn't it? Is it the platform edge? It looks a little bit. I don't 
questions. The original line there. Does look all one, doesn't it? I mean, obviously that's a private residence now. That beautiful Manchester, Sheffield and Lincoln, it's your railway stone. Just up there, look. I've not seen a station with a balcony before. No. Well, this was, I don't know, I'm getting my stations confused. This was the one that had the, the private waiting room for the, um, the local Duke. What was his name? What was the fella's name now? No. I can't remember his name now. Get over to this side. And get a better look at the... Thank you, thank you. Wow. And it's a shame there's not a, a clearer view um, of that, isn't it? That's a beautiful building. So what we've got here, one and a half mile to Fergaland, four and a half to Penniston, where we're off. Ten miles to Sheffield. We'll crack on. Pass over a road bridge. This is, we came underneath this, didn't we? When we were driving here, yeah. With the weather, I think we're in danger of just getting his heads down and, and stomping through. Um, but look at the enormity of this, these cuttings that we're walking through. We've not got the sheer rock face and spectacular features have they of some of the ones that you see, but just the, the depth of it, what they must have had to dig out to get through here. We've actually seen more horses and cyclists today. Why not many? Bursting out of the cutting. That's hello. All right. That's the uh, the first bit of open scenery we've seen today. Just reminds you that you are in a nice nice part of the world. It's opened out again, hasn't it, John? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's another yeah. wide wide area that we're sat on. We've just come out of this cutting. Mm. Now, concrete block. Oh, there's two. Now first, uh, just be careful I don't topple down there. Um, yeah, be concrete blocks with the the bolts sticking up. Now, are these part of the overhead line system, or are these, or is this something else like a signal or or something? I make no apology for uh, for showing you bases of posts that are no longer there today. We've stopped here because we've been looking for this spot um, on the maps as we've been walking up. Fergaland Coal Branch deviated uh, to the right hand side of where we are. We're long gone. I think even on some of those old maps, oh, it's showing as a disused railway, isn't it? So I don't know um, if it's doable. Um, but just in here, there's, I can see, it's not easy to get into stinks a bit actually um where's there's a recess here somewhere john i've just been seeing it i've lost it um there's a signal box on the old map there is indeed this is the recess i've just been talking about it's not the greatest of ground to get through um make it onto here can you see that can you see the recess in the in the rock cutting they've actually made uh, a square or rectangular recess in the rocks Wondering if that's the location of the signal box there. I mean, it's it's man-made for something, that isn't it? They've not just thought, oh, let's cut out a recess in the thick limestone just for the, the sheer fun of it. And it's not very clear definition, but there is the branch line, the Thurgle and Cole branch. I can't remember off the top of my head which collier is that served now. Um, but there it goes. So this is uh, this is Fergaland tunnel ahead. We'll get to that in a moment. There's a collection of uh, collection of posts, and some information boards, some benches, information board about the tunnels. We've just been having a discussion, me and John, uh, pronunciation. We've done Cuddeth, haven't we? Yeah. 
You know how that's cool. could have. Cool. We were just looking for Fergoland. Now, Fergoland, well, I think it's pronounced Fergoland. Just roll off the tongue. No go, <laughs> Fergoland. Um, but Fergoland had a station. Um, it's not here anymore. There's no trace, apparently. But I think it was around where this bridge is here. Um, I say it had a station. In 18 months, that station existed. I don't know the reasons why. But uh, it's a similar story with just a little bit further up the line at Oxpring as well. That had a, again, I think the station opened in 18, uh, 1845 and it had closed by 1847. So we're approaching Thurgoland tunnels now. Quite a bit to tell you about those. Two tunnels at Thurgoland. So We've got the old, we've got the original tunnel and we've got a more modern tunnel. A couple of abutments just left. See the tunnel just appearing into view, John. Oh yeah. A bit of shelter for uh, <laughs> bit of rest, right? for 10 minutes. So as I was saying, there's, there's two tunnels. There's the original tunnel from, we'll put the day on the screen now. Um, when this line was electrified, it was completed in the 1950s. They found that the tunnel, the original tunnel, although it was double track, it wasn't big enough to accommodate the electricity and the uh, and, sorry, the wires. So they thought instead of, of boring out a little bit more of the same tunnel, it's basically made a second tunnel. So we had a we had like a one track going one way through one tunnel and the other track coming the other way through the other tunnel. One the old tunnel is now bricked off. You can get in it if you're adventurous. But I'll see what it's like. I don't think we'll get in it. I've not got the light in the yeah, tunnels sure. today. And but yeah, the newer one you can you can walk through. So let's go and have a look. And you can see uh, you can see the trap bed opening out now to the two tunnels. Um, not great view of both from this side. There's the new one. Shuffle across here, and the old one's just in here. You can just see the top of the portal. So let's go and. Let's go and investigate, shall we? Look at the carving out of the rock face. But the two tunnel. Can you see the two tunnel portals are joined, John? Yeah, yeah. This is already slippy and we've not even got to the steep bit yet. Um, so there we go. Let's get up this last bit. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, I this be as close to the tunnel top as this. The size of these. The detail in these things are just the cool shape. Yeah. You don't need to do that. And, it, and as usual, what a shame someone's felt the need to add some graffiti yeah. to it. But what a beautiful, it's on the top bit, beautiful uh, portal. My other problem is. Uh, since doing my leg and my knee and I can't kneel down. Um, I can't even crouch at the minute. Um, and you, that is easily getting a ball. I'm we're not going in today. It is a it is literally a mud bath down there. Yeah. You don't want to risk getting in there and not being able to get out, but maybe one for the summer. But we'll see what it's like at the other side, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar kind of I think it's it is bricked up at the other side. Um the water running down in the side. Um, all right, we'll go through the new tunnel then. Tell you, John, we're not we're not going in there. I know a man who has. How you keep him, Pat? Hi there. Right, so we've seen the entrance, the northern portal. No, the southern portal, sorry, to the, uh, the old tunnel. Now we're gonna walk through the new tunnel. Ah, oh, look at it, it's well lit, John, and it literally looks so inviting. We should have just spent four hours recording in here instead of getting wet today. So they did the electrification for this. Um, in, oh, it, it opened, the electrification opened in the 1950s. Just clean the screen. Um, 
you look, the electrification of this line started under LNER, so this is pre-British Rail days, and that's a long time ago, isn't it? So at the top, can you see, it's purple, LNER 1947. But look just above the keystone there, BR 1948. So it started under LNER, and when they finished this tunnel, we were actually under British Railways. And look at the water coming down there. All right, let's take a, a walk through. It's not tremendously well lit uh, in here. I mean, look at the, there, the brackets. You notice there's a strip. Can you see the, the darker strip? And that's protection for the tunnel because it did still see steam trains. Serve. Wow, you can hear the echo already. Flakes, that plate breather. Yeah. Wow. Oh, gosh. Comes back, doesn't it? I don't know if the sound's coming through on the camera or not, but that is, you can, you can see, you can still hear John's hello. Wow. It's amazing. Uh, not the most inspiring tunnel I've been in. I don't have a massive tunnel uh, fetish, um, but it's just, is it just sprayed concrete, this? We're assuming the brackets on, on the, the roof is for the, over a line equipment. Other than I thought, I thought this is only a, a short one. I've never been through this tunnel, by the way. Although I know the area and I've visited sections of this line and various points, I've never walked down the whole, uh, the whole section. So this is a new experience for me today. And here we are, bursting out. You know, part of me, John, was this little part of me wanted to burst out the other end and it'd be like a glorious sunny day. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like when you go on the, sometimes when you go on the train to uh, Grindelford, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go in the top of the tunnel in one climate, come out yeah. with a completely different weather system. <laughs> what for at this end as well? Uh, there we go, same again. Can't see the top stone. Um, it's raining heavier now. But yeah, BR 1948. Yes, yeah, I can see that L and ER. 1947 and a retaining wall on this side but yeah it bursts us out into another another cutting uh, and down this side should be swing you around should be the other end of the old the old tunnel same design look at the turrets either side we get a bit of a more open view on this one obviously because we had that huge mound of earth didn't we piled up on the other side. It's been bugging me since we were stood on that big mound of earth at the other side mm. where I'd seen that design tunnel before and I, I just couldn't, I couldn't jog my memory to it. Right. If I was Jack. Oh, it's the same as yours, Bobby Jack. Well. With the sort of curved brick. Yeah. I don't know the, curved I'd have to look at the photo. I mean, it it's the arch, right. that curved. Mm. Well, no, I don't mean well, all, all arches are curved. I mean the, yeah, the, the sort of, yeah, profile yeah. of the, uh, the stone. I will wrap up this video here just uh, by Thurgol and Tunnel. We're carrying on to Peniston today, um, so that'll be in the next video. So keep an eye out for that. Um, plenty to see. There's a lot I'm looking forward to seeing oh, yeah. on this next section. Um, so, uh, yeah, cheers for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>